on call. I'm Jenna Miller. If you live with pain, you are not alone. Pain affects more Americans than diabetes, heart disease, and cancer combined. Pain attacks the human body at every vulnerable target, muscles, bones, and joints. Each person and their pain are unique. More than 20% of U.S. adults have chronic pain and pain sufferers. Statistics show that women are more likely to experience pain than men. The best way to manage your case could be very different from what works for someone else. Pain management is our topic tonight on Doctors on Call with our guest, Dr. Bell Razafentra Bay. Presentation of Doctors on Call on Smoky Hills PBS is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from CAMGO, the state's only Kansas-based medical liability provider, serving medical professionals and advocating for the health for all Kansans. Russell Regional Hospital, experts, neighbors, friends. Your family is our family. Staff at Smith County Memorial Hospital wants to set the standard of excellence for health care in North Central Kansas. Dr. Bell Razafinder Bay earned his medical degree from University de Madagascar and completed his residency and training in physical medicine and rehabilitation at the Loma Linda University Medical Center in California after spending a year of internal medicine internship at the same institution. Dr. Bell is certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation by the American Board of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. He moved to Great Bend in 2005 and is president of Pain, Spine and Rehab, PA. Give us a call at 800-337-4788 toll free with your medical questions about pain management on Doctors on Call. Doctors on Call brings you information which may be useful to you when you see your own physician. Thank you so much for coming back and joining us, Dr. Bell. Let's go ahead with uh, the show and start with some questions. Well, First, it's a privilege and honor to be here as we educate uh, the public about pain management. It is, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of the most common uh, cause of disability in the United States. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's start off with talking about uh, every year I feel like there's some new innovative, you know, uh, technique that can be used for uh, pain management. So let's talk about what's, what's new. Thank you. Um, pain management has been uh, uh, evolved and changed, you know, uh, with the um, increase in aging populations and uh, the benefit and risk of using pain medication, which most of people are in pain, um, about 50% uh, of people or more have experienced pain uh, at least once in about uh, three months. And uh, those are, we have uh, those people who called high impact of pain uh, in their lives. So um, to find the benefit and uh, harm from using the medication, uh, the pain management has uh, been uh, shifted toward treating the cause of the problems. And so uh, about 40% uh, of pain really related to the spine in the back. 35% of the pain in the lower limb and 30% of the pain in the upper limbs. About 20% of the pain is from head migraine and about less than 10% is really related to organs um, and genitals. So uh, uh, for this reason, uh, the pain management has been improved so much to target those pain um, that treated pretty effectively what's happening. So uh, when you talk about the pain management, <coughs> for instance, uh, surgery has been um, creating fear in most people because uh, it's the recovery time and so on and uh, uh, now we have uh, called minimally invasive spin surgery. For instance, we have back pain that um, causing by um, multiple reason, uh, nerve, pinched nerve, uh, it could cause by a disc herniation and it could cause by uh, arthritis that pushing on this uh, uh, spinal cord, uh, all of that created pain. But uh, the latest now is using uh, minimally invasive spine surgery, which can be done uh, in one day, less than one hour, and people go home. For instance, this device is made of titanium 
and four people having pain, uh, radicular pain, pinched to nerve from the side, uh, putting this small device uh, in someone uh, will relieve the pain almost right away. And it can be done in one hour. So uh, that change is a, a game changer in uh, treating patients with back pain. Uh, for instance, this uh, 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 device, a little bit different, can be uh, inserted from the side of the patient uh, made of titanium and this device will um, uh, create space that uh, most patients who after age of 30 losing their disc height has degenerative disc, has bulging disc and using the device like that will uh, help uh, open up the spaces there, you know, the spaces that it's going to open up and uh, improve the f um, uh, the opening that has been tight for myofitis and disc and so on, and those uh, a small uh, uh, instruments um, help reduce pain, which has been could be really uh, devastating, uh, causing devastating uh, pain and uh, affect the work on patients. Uh, for instance, for all the people, um, compression fractures that happened uh, quite common. Uh, in the especially ladies um, can cause so much disability and pain. But uh, having uh, this type of device called kyphoplasty, inserting bone cement into the vertebra will relieve the pain almost right away. And it can be done in less than 30 minutes. So this is uh, some of those uh, uh, treatment that can be provided to patients. So you don't have to really be content, I mean, having pain and stay there, but uh, there is uh, almost a uh, solution for pain uh, in a very timely manner. Uh, for some people who had multiple surgeries uh, or people who had uh, multiple problems, uh, uh, I've been tried uh, lots of uh, modalities, tried lots of intervention. Um, the spinal stimulator is an option. The stimulator is a way of uh, putting some uh, uh, two uh, wires behind the spine and it will um, actually block the uh, pain uh, from reaching the brain. And so uh, those stimulators have been refined and uh, getting more and more efficient and effective in uh, treating the pain. So those are a way of reducing the risk of um, uh, having increased use of um, medication, which most of the time people with narcotics might be depressed, might be anxious, and uh, have a combination of medication that have the same side effect, you know, affecting memory, uh, causing fatigue, it will uh, affect alertness, and uh, depressions, all of that. We need to treat the pain as soon as possible before it becomes chronic and affecting not only one person, but it can affect the family, the community, and uh, socially. So uh, uh, I'm glad that uh, the pain management has been uh, um, uh, include, uh, has been uh, getting better, uh, has been evolved that address the source of the pain. What kind of recovery is involved in these procedures? Um, these procedures, uh, you know, the patient to go home the same day, right away. You know, within one or two hours, uh, the patient to go home, and actually they walked out of the uh, the surgery, and um, they will come back in about ten, uh, ten days or fourteen days for just uh, removal of sutures or follow up, but uh, uh, they can function at home. Uh, with basic functioning, except you know, uh, limited bending and uh, um, weight lifting and so on, but they can still um, able to function uh, at home within 42 hours, uh, 48 hours, and 72 hours. Okay. All right. We're going to go to the phone lines. We've got Robert on the line from Great Bend. Hi, Robert. Go ahead with your question for Dr. Bell tonight. Hey, I, I was wondering how you guys treat multi-joint pain and arthritis. Um, well, thank you, Robert. That is a very common question. Um, arthritis affecting uh, 
not only the spine but the joint. As I mentioned earlier, that 35% uh, 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 of uh, pain coming from arthritis in the lower limb and 30% affected uh, the upper limbs. So um, let's say uh <coughs> we talk about knees. Um, there is a way of uh, treating knees. Um, this is uh, uh, pictures of, uh, of a knee with arthritis. Uh, I would like to tell you that uh, there's no way to uh, stop arthritis. There's no way to uh, really, once it's happening, it's a part of wear and tear. So uh, what we are trying is to treat the pain. Um, this is a knee as nerve um, uh, that really carries the pain. So uh, there is a procedure that we can do to block the nerves surrounding the knees and then uh, use radiofrequency ablation to ablate the nerves. And that uh, help with especially uh, someone who already had knee surgery or someone cannot have knee surgery. Uh, this radiofrequency uh, genical uh, genicular nerve ablation is a good alternative. Um, uh, the hips um, uh, also um, have some uh, way of treating it, but um, this is an option. I know a, a hip and knee replacement is very common and very effective, and those are uh, already we recommend to have them. Uh, but this is for uh, lower limb. In upper limb, um, this is a picture of uh, people with uh, carpal tunnel. Um, you know, carpal tunnel surgery um, usually useful when the nerve is pinched in in between the hand and the wrist uh, by ligament uh, that tighten up, and the patient may feel like, oh, I cannot sleep at night. My hand is numb and tingles and burning. Um, this is because the nerve is pinched right there uh, in the wrist area. And uh, we, uh, nowadays we have a treatment, even minimally invasive, just a very tiny um, uh, opening, um, uh, like uh, one, um, uh, one centimeter or less, about half centimeters of opening to uh, insert a, need, uh, a knife there, that is hook knife, and uh, under ultrasound guidance, we can cut that ligament without any even much bleeding at all. The patient can go home the same day and, um, you know, can use that hand. So um, uh, the treatment and technique has been improved to make sure that the loss of work is minimized and the function can resume as soon as possible. The pain is stopped right away. So uh, those are type of samples of uh, treatment that address the problems so we can uh, use less and less uh, pain medication for patients. And what about prevention? Is there any way to prevent arthritis? <coughs> pain, medi uh, pain medicine really uh, incorporate prevention, uh, treatment, and also rehabilitation, and very important question about preventions. Uh, the best way to uh, prevent uh, 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 pain is to uh, help ourselves get fit, you know. Um, you know, um, it's not the bone that really holds our spine or muscle uh, or limbs. It's most likely the muscles and ligament and tendon, when they are strong and fit, it helps uh, protect our joints. And so um, for disc and ligament, especially in the spine, uh, being fit um, is very helpful. Um, uh, make sure the weight is in the right range, and those are uh, very uh, useful in preventing uh, early uh, wear and tear of our uh, spine. Some people may say, oh, doctor, my spine is like uh, 10 years older than me, you know. Uh, we have a community that very hardworking, and I've seen that often, a very hardworking community that has kind of early um, wear and tear of uh, the spine and the joints and um, that is sad but uh, I think if we can work on uh, uh, fitness more and this is the pain management is not only addressing pain we do address lifestyle we recommend about even diet and sleep because uh, those are part of pain if someone is fired at work that affects 
you know, that's painful. And we address that. The emotional part of the pain, the physical part of the pain, the social part of the pain, and the family part of the pain. And so uh, it is a multidisciplinary. Uh, often I um, visit with patients, encourage them, and multiple times I pray with patients because that is part of healing, you know. There is something I cannot do to patient in pain because there is no way I can make it to zero pain. But uh, I've, uh, in my experience, a pain with patient has been very helpful as well. Excellent. Very <coughs> great. We're going to go back to the phone lines. We've got Rosie on the line from Victoria. Hi, Rosie. You are live on the air with Dr. Bell. What is your question tonight? Hi, Rosie. Go ahead. Are you there? Yeah. I just wanted to tell him that he worked on my SI joint last year, and it is really doing great. Okay, excellent. Um, as uh, uh, mentioned, uh, uh, that is another uh, procedure that uh, um, I mentioned here. This sacroiliac joint is one of the 20% of pain in the back and uh, one of the most challenging, you know, ch very challenging to treat it for most doctors, but it's very common. However, um, in the past has been, uh, you know, some people have been therapy, exercises, it's not really helping much with the pain. And the injection uh, is helpful, but it's very self-limiting. It may not last m one month or, or less, but uh, having two multiple of this injection, um, it's not an uh, efficient way to treat the pain. Um, since about a year or two, we use uh, um, sacroiliac transfusion. So uh, in addition to radiofrequency ablation, which is uh, uh, put into sleep those nerves, ablate those nerves, it's helped about six months or more um, of the pain. Uh, after those are failed and does not help, um, we provided an percutaneous, which means um, very minimally invasive, uh, put in this joint. We have a bone graft that inserted into the joint and it would blend into the joint and actually works really well. The result has been amazing for the patient we did treat for last year. And um, I'm glad that uh, we have patients that have testimonial about their li relief. And uh, uh, we are thankful that uh, uh, we can provide something that is tenuous, working well, uh, provide the good satisfaction, and it's cost effective for patients uh, who have in pain. <coughs> Excellent. You had mentioned uh, how important it is to stay fit. Mm -hmm. What, how do you feel about contact sports and how that might affect a person, when, if they're playing contact sports at a young age, affect their pain levels uh, later on in life? Yes, uh, uh, that's a very nice question. So one uh, lady, a very good friend of ours, um, uh, when I was riding bike and had an accident. I was riding bike and had an accident. Um, and I was in hospital intensive care for, uh, for a while. And she mentioned to me and said, it's nice to get fit, but if you are too fit, you can get injured yourself. <laughs> and that's my um, response to that. We need to uh, balance. We need to uh, see the benefit and the risk uh, of what we're doing. Uh, uh, make sure that uh, we will not uh, uh, create some long-lasting damage to our brain. You know, um, you may have concussions of brain injury. Uh, you may have broken bones and so on. So um, um, we need to use a common sense for that. But fitness is always great for the heart, for the lungs, for the bones, for pain in the future. Let's talk about <coughs> sciatica and what the symptoms are and what you have to help. Uh, sciatica is a very common word of uh, pain um, coming from the back, along the thighs, and sometimes even travel below the knee. Um, we need to have a very accurate diagnostic for that because the treatment is very different. Uh, sciatica coming from uh, <coughs> people, this is uh, the sacroiliac joint, which is a joint pain, uh, can cause pain that very similar to sciatica because the nerve, the big nerve of the sciatic nerve is just below it. 
and uh, the pain is very common and say, oh, I have sciatica, but uh, it, it could be just the bone pain, uh, joint pain. So need to see a doctor and nail the diagnosis and say what we actually have. The most common uh, cause of sciatica is uh, um <coughs> the nerve pinched, you know, I will say, I will take this here. Um, uh, you see a nerve uh, coming from, uh, from these holes and pinched uh, from there, either from the disc or from bone, and uh, those nerves travel uh, behind uh, the thigh and onto the legs. Any pains that come in from uh, this lumbar spine, L3, L4, L5, S1, will cause type of sciatica. And those are the very common uh, cause, especially the lowest three of the vertebra uh, cause common type of uh, sciatica. The, the doctors will know exactly and say, what level is this by checking on patient? If the pain is mainly in the front of the thighs, that is um, possibly uh, in L2 and 3. If it's uh, behind the back, in the uh, thighs and below the knee, the calf, and uh, bottom of the foot that most likely S1. Uh, so uh, by uh, listening to patient uh, description of pain, we can really tell where this pain comes from. And um, uh, you can start some treatment even before the MRI, uh, because uh, if we have some treatment that helps some, mm, have two or three of those treatments, we might, you know, we can uh, postpone the MRI for a while and the patient can function right away. So um, that is part of the sciatica that I mentioned um, uh, many things. Uh, piriformis syndrome, which is a muscle that pinch the big nerve of the sciatica right there. There's a muscle across the back and the sciatica nerve goes in there. About 12% of people can have pain from that type of piriformis syndrome and feel like sciatica, but the treatment is very different because it's a muscle that pinches the nerve and we need to relax that muscle, release the pressure to help the pain. All right, we have just a couple minutes left, but we've got a caller waiting to ask a question. So go ahead with your question for Dr. Bell tonight. Hello, Dr. Bell. Hello. This is Trudy. <laughs> what do you do for scoliosis? Hi, Trudy. Um, Thank you for calling and thank you for being with us tonight. Scoliosis is a um, disease that uh, happened mostly uh, starting at, uh, you know, even a younger age and, um, and some people um, can have difficulty with it. Um, there are a few options. Um, at the early stage, there are some exercise that can be done in therapy and then OTRD has been having uh, uh, some therapy. Uh, but uh, it also can be treated with surgery, you know, have some hardware to align it. For people that is really not fit for that surgery uh, because of the risk of the big surgery, then um, uh, we might just treat the pain. And some of the treatment is to, uh, um, here is uh, the area, <coughs> it not really help to correct the scoliosis, but it just control the pain. Uh, there's a small nerves coming from, uh, from these to feed those, uh, we call it facet, and uh, we can uh, numb those nerves and burn those nerves so the patient won't feel the pain in their spine. That is an option. Uh, other option that we have is if the scoliosis is not that bad and it's creating pinched nerve, we can use this type of device called um, interspinous fusion that will help correct some of the, the uh, sw small scoliosis or spondylolisthesis. But um, at early on, uh, physical therapy and the exercises uh, to help uh, correct those and need to be done on very regular and consistently, consistently. Uh, but uh, it might not be uh, uh, perfect in correcting what is already established, but uh, it will possibly help prevent worsening of it. Great. Very good. Thank you so much, Dr. Bell, for being our guest tonight on Doctors on Call. We're talking about pain management, very important topic. On our next Doctors on Call, we'll be discussing physical therapy. You can email questions to us for our next program at doctors at shptv.org. Thank you for joining us for Doctors on Call. I'm Jenna Miller.
presentation of Doctors on Call on Smoky Hills PBS is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from CAMGO, the state's only Kansas-based medical liability provider, serving medical professionals and advocating for the health for all Kansans. Your family is our family. Staff at Smith County Memorial Hospital wants to set the standard of excellence for health care in North Central Kansas.